CNCF uh, research and user. Uh, today, we have one presentation about multi-cloud, multi-cluster orchestration, and specifically an update on the Karmada project. Um, I think, Kevin, you will be the speaker. Yes, yes. All right, so we don't have any other pressing issues. I'll just remind everyone about uh, getting a couple of additional chairs in the group to help out. So if you have time and would like to help ping me, uh, some already did, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I think we can go straight to the presentation, uh, maybe half an hour and then leave for questions or, or we can maybe Maybe even in the in the middle to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Kevin, for this. And yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining the uh, the presentation. So I will just start. So the uh, sorry, uh, the Kamada project is actually. Uh, uh, aimed for uh, building the multi-cloud and also multi-cluster platform for uh, basically managing Kubernetes. And you, some of you might know the history of Kubernetes Federation. So actually, the Kamada is the K, uh, the V3 of uh, Kubernetes Federation. Uh, the reason why we moved from uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, sub project to a standalone is we we are uh, kind of expecting to build a, uh, a more open uh, transparent community and uh, also actually when starting the v3 a lot of uh, end user and also uh, the uh, member companies joined uh, this effort so we were uh, aiming to provide uh, a a neutral project and a neutral uh, uh, community to all the uh, users and the contributors. The V3, uh, the updates, uh, the major difference to previous version is that we, we finally decided to move back to the Kubernetes native API way. Uh, you might remember that the KubeFed, uh, the V2 implementation goes uh, to an uh, embedded API, basically uh, it's a, a CRD, uh, but it turned out uh, a lot of uh, challenges. Yeah, so that's a little bit background. And also uh, this is a, a architecture overview of Kamada. And as you can see, uh, it's very uh, similar to the Kubernetes single uh, cluster architecture. So. Uh, today, Kamada has its own uh, API server. It's actually the, the same binary from uh, Kubernetes API server, but we loaded uh, a set of extra uh, CRDs, uh, which is the uh, Kamada policies. And uh, the, uh, the, we also expose Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes native APIs, but the behavior is a little bit Different. That's why we are not uh, running it uh, 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 with the existing Kubernetes cluster because in the Kamada control plan, you cannot see any nodes basically, and the deployment will uh, turn out to uh, create uh, uh, deployments to multiple member clusters instead of creating. Uh, pods directly. Yeah, that's the the, the major uh, idea of this uh, project. And also Kamada workload controllers uh, basically implements the uh, the uh, multi-cluster behavior of the uh, Kubernetes APIs as well as the uh, Kamada policies. And also the Kamada scheduler deal with the multi-cluster scheduling stuff. And you can see there's a, a component called execution controller, uh, which uh, provides the um, uh, basically push mode uh, management to the member clusters. Uh, that means all the 
uh, kind of updates uh, is uh, started triggered uh, by the execution controller and uh, applied to the member cluster. While we also support Kamada agent, which is a, a pool mode. Basically, the the agent will pull uh, the will uh, uh, sync updates from the API server through list watch and apply changes to the member cluster. And also uh, to deal with the uh, clusters on the edge, we we are relying uh, Cube Edge to to better uh, deal with the network issue, but that part is still under development. So uh, a little bit more about the core concepts. Uh, we, 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 we basically uh, call all the Kubernetes native resources uh, the resource template because it's, it acts act as a, a template to the Kamada control plan. Uh, Kamada control plan don't need to uh, really understand the details from, uh, especially don't really need to understand the detailed fields uh, of the uh, template. Uh, it will just uh, 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 propagate it according to the propagation policy. So the propagation policy is uh, uh, is uh, uh, API to help users uh, uh, to define the the, the policy, uh, how they want to spread their uh, workloads to the member clusters. The resource binding is a kind of unified abstraction that is for uh, uh, drive the internal process of the uh, Kamada control plan. And also the override policy is to uh, help users to define the configuration uh, updates, modification uh, to uh, to the uh, resources, maybe from the cluster perspective, or maybe from uh, more uh, the other uh, perspective, like the the zone or the cloud provider. Uh, the work API is uh, actually a concept from the uh, uh, multi-cluster SIG. It's actually an object to basically wrap the Kubernetes uh, vanilla objects, and uh, so we can uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, 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 transfer more uh, field information uh, to the member cluster. So this is uh, um, the major workflow inside the Kamala. As you can see, we I marked. Uh, uh, three uh, icon of people here. Uh, it, it because uh, in different organization, um, they may have different uh, team to deal with uh, the system. The uh, the application system, uh, team may focus more about their uh, own uh, application deployment day to day. And the, the uh, there can be uh, you know the environment admin team to set up common uh, rules like common uh, propagation policies as well as uh, common override policies. So uh, and also in some of the other uh, organization, the team can be uh, just the one actual team. And once you have some common uh, reusable. Uh, policies uh, configured, uh, uh, people don't really need to uh, be aware of that policy. The, uh, for the day-to-day -day application deployment rolling out, uh, people just need to uh, modify the, uh, the resource template and the, the, the system will uh, do the rest of the work. So basically, uh, we will first uh, match the policy or uh, associate the uh, template with one of the matching policy. And uh, the Kamada scheduler will deal with the, the scheduling part and update the result to the, uh, to the binding, uh, to the, uh, to the binding resources. And also when uh, the, when it uh, generate, when the binding controller generates the, the work, uh, uh, work object, 
the override policies is applied. The work of, uh, object is uh, uh, will be created uh, one to each member cluster. It uh, the application that that is going to be uh, deployed. Uh, so this is a very uh, simple uh, example to help you understand how uh, Kamada uh, implement a a, a uh, zero change refactoring. Uh, so on the right, you can see it's actually a vanilla uh, Kubernetes deployment uh, definition. The only uh, difference is we add a label here. The key is HA mode. The, the value is multi-zone replication. And uh, so basically no any uh, definition change on this uh, API. So you can, so for uh, users, they, mm, you, they can directly submit any uh, uh, the YAML file from their existing single cluster to Kamada. And on the, on the left is the uh, example of the propagation policy. And you can see there's a, a resource selector and also the placement. Uh, the resource selector here uh, means uh, to match the deployment with labels that has key HA mode and the uh, value modes on replication. The placement field uh, indicates the spread constraints. So the here, uh, the here, uh, the in the example, it means that uh, uh, spread this uh, application to two zones and uh, three clusters. So, uh, as you can see within this example, actually, uh, you can basically submit any uh, resource uh, template, so, uh, uh, the any deployment, uh, once you have the uh, certain uh, will have to uh, the scheduler to uh, to schedule to uh, it to two zone and the three clusters. So uh, this is a little bit more detail about the propagation policy. So basically, uh, why we uh, split it into a uh, standalone object, uh, the consideration is that we want to make it uh, reused by uh, most of the uh, resource workloads. And uh, basically, you, you can use resource selector to indicate uh, the, the, filter, the filter rule, uh, the matching rule. And actually, you can kind of indicate multiple uh, API kinds here. And also the placement, uh, in the placement, we have the uh, cluster affinity to, uh, it's a little bit uh, similar to the node affinity in Kubernetes to help you select uh, the, the clusters, the set of clusters you want to propagate your workloads. The cluster toleration is kind of uh, similar to uh, Kubernetes tent toleration mechanism. So we also have tent on clusters, and the spread constraint is uh, is for uh, uh, the anti affinity between clusters, and the, the uh, uh, override policy uh, we also split it to a standalone uh, API because uh, in in some of the uh, use case, uh, people may have common. Uh, override the rule. Uh, for example, according to different cloud provider, they may want to always modify the the, the storage class to to the current corresponding uh, type on that cloud. And also, uh, maybe people want to uh, modify the uh, the application startup uh, command due to different uh, hardware architecture. For example. So, uh, so uh, and with its uh, uh, standalone API, uh, different workloads, uh, different resource templates are able to uh, reuse it. 
And also we have uh, multiple uh, plugin uh, in the overriders. Uh, so help you help people uh, better indicate their override uh, rules. Um, so on, on the uh, member cluster API, uh, you can see there's some uh, basic information. Uh, so we, uh, because we support multiple uh, type of uh, uh, mode uh, interacting with the control plan, so we have the mode, sync mode to to indicate whether it's a uh, uh, it's in a, a push mode or pull mode, and also we split it the the um, the cluster um, the member cluster uh, certificate. And also the the to, uh, the 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 key, so uh, it it makes it uh, easier and less concern when the uh, the infrastructure team uh, grants uh, access to the application teams uh, on this API. So uh, so for different application team, they can you know. Uh, Query the member cluster API by themselves and uh, see whether uh, any uh, cluster they can uh, uh, limit their application or, or if there's any uh, cluster they prefer to run their application. And also, we have a uh, uh, we we also collect the uh, cluster basic information like Kubernetes version, uh, enabled API sets and the version. Uh, this is very helpful for the Kamada scheduler to uh, to avoid scheduling uh, applications that need certain version of API while the member cluster didn't install or support that. And also we we actually calculate the. Uh, resource the member member cluster available resources in the Kamada control plan. So the resource summary here is a kind of uh, uh, compressed uh, resource information of the member cluster to uh, to better help the uh, scheduling uh, between different clusters. Uh, and the, today we we actually added more. Uh, uh, features to the uh, to the Kamada project. Uh, some of the uh, uh, I already introduced, uh, like the multi-cluster management. We support multiple mode, and this is super useful uh, in different environment that uh, the control plan has public uh, IP address while the member clusters not, or the the flip side, and also. Uh, um, uh, as we use the uh, expose the Kubernetes native API, it's uh, quite easy to uh, integrate with the other uh, tools, and we we also uh, support uh, propagating the CRDs. So for the users, it's quite easy. Uh, they just need to install the CRD on the Kamada control plan, and the system is able to help propagate the corresponding workload. And also, uh, we have built-in uh, some built-in uh, policies to simplify the deployment mode. And also, we we have the uh, the the cross cloud, basically cross cloud cluster API failover mechanism. And also, uh, we provide the multi cluster uh, services to simplify the the, the load balancing between uh, applications in different cloud. Um, so this is uh, a little bit more details about the uh, the uh, multi-cluster management. Uh, we uh, actually, for some of the uh, uh, new users, they may uh, they are more familiar with the the single cluster management. When they have more and more clusters, they kind of need to repeat their management of the. Uh, uh, operations. So with Kamada, it's quite easy. You know, uh, you have uh, a, sing a single uh, access point, and you can just uh, configure the, 
deploying deployment uh, propagation rule and the submit maybe one time and the system help you spread your applications. And also, uh, uh, actually, uh, Kamada is able to uh, divide the application into different parts and split it uh, and send them into uh, the different clusters. And also, uh, we have the duplication mode to easily set uh, multiple rest of the uh, workload uh, in different clusters. The divide mode is more useful for for the uh, for for the like the the job management uh, or what the other kind of uh, round to completion workloads. They just want to find somewhere to run their uh, job and get the result. And uh, people just uh, you know, for example, you create a job and uh, submit it to the command control plan, and the scheduler will will split uh, the job into uh, several smaller parts and uh, send it to the uh, cloud resources. And uh, actually, the division uh, mode division rule uh, can be according to the static weight in, in indicated by uh, the admin or dynamically uh, according to the uh, dynamically uh, decided according to the system. Uh, and also the, sorry. Yeah, and also uh, for the cl multi cluster failover, we we are also uh, we also provide uh, the cluster status management. Uh, we basically uh, uh, use the tent toleration mechanism uh, when when the cluster has a certain uh, issue, we just add corresponding tent to mark the uh, the cluster. Uh, into some uh, error status, and the, the the control plan will uh, will automatically migrate the workloads accordingly. And also, actually, when when uh, when doing the mig migration, we will uh, we also encounter the uh, the brace period to to make the uh, make make sure the uh, the workload is uh, available to provide the uh, enough uh, instances, enough replicas. And actually for the application uh, with the toleration mechanism, the different uh, application uh, can, can have different um, toleration and they can uh, uh, be migrated uh, separately according to their own uh, toleration uh, rule. Uh, and also one of the uh, the uh, useful feature, uh, feature we added is the unified authentication. Uh, in some of the case, uh, people may still need to uh, directly interact with the Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes API. That means uh, People need, need direct access to a, a certain Kubernetes uh, cluster. Uh, the with with Kamada uh, unified authentication, uh, the the user don't need to change their uh, don't need to change their token, don't need to change their certificate. Uh, Kamada API uh, Kamada aggregated API server uh, will deal with the uh, the uh, uh, the 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 access and also for um, Kamada um, uh, control plan itself when it forwarding the uh, vanilla single cluster API call it will uh, impersonate as the uh, input user so uh, in the mem uh, the member cluster. Uh, the the authentication authorization is still 
uh, actually author authorization is uh, kind of uh, checked as the input user. Um, uh, another uh, useful feature uh, is the uh, global resource view. Um, is, this is super useful for the uh, infrastructure team to to quickly find out if there's any uh, error state in the cluster. Um, besides cl uh, uh, collecting all the uh, uh, object status, we also uh, provide the elastic search open search uh, interface to users so they can uh, use some keywords to quickly filter uh, quickly find uh, find the objects they want to take a look and also for the uh, multi cluster discovery we basically uh, implement the the multi cluster uh, service uh, standard which is discussed in the SIG multi cluster. And uh, this is a uh, uh, very uh, uh, straightforward with uh, uh, services uh, already running in a member cluster. We just uh, insert another uh, record of the cluster that has uh, backend in, the, uh, in another cluster. Uh, in the MCS, the multi-cluster service uh, uh, the, uh, specification, actually the service name is is uh, is a different name. So recently, we are also uh, developing uh, another mechanism with a, a global unified service name to uh, to deal with uh, the, the load balancing across friends. Uh, that is uh, lo located in, in the different uh, clusters. And also uh, as an open source project, we, uh, uh, we uh, think the community development is very important. And the Kamada project uh, moved to incubate level uh, last December. And uh, so far we, uh, we have over 600 contributors and also there are uh, a lot of uh, members uh, contributing to the, the uh, base and also uh, you uh, you may see some of the uh, end users listed here and uh, actually we have uh, adopters list in the uh, Tamada website uh, uh, more information and there are uh, so basically we uh, we have multiple type of users. Some of the uh, users use Kamada to deal with the, uh, the the disaster recovery issue, and some of the user uh, use Kamada to deal with the uh, cloud bursting issue, and some of the cluster just uh, uh, some of the users just use Kamada to to have a larger. Uh, larger resource pool. So uh, this year we are also uh, uh, adding more features uh, to the Kamala project. One of the very uh, one of the very important, very useful feature is about a fleet APS server. This is super useful for uh, for users that is uh, more familiar with the. Uh, the single cluster uh, experience uh, and uh, not yet ready to uh, to manage a really federated application. So the uh, Fleet API server basically aggregate or the uh, uh, logically aggregates over the uh, resources in the the member clusters and provide a uh, unified, simplified uh, query and uh, edit uh, experience uh, to the users. So you don't need to really uh, switch context to, uh, to, to tell system which uh, cluster I'm currently interacting. And uh, we, are, we are developing more uh, uh, scheduling uh, 
mechanism to also help support a uh, better running like, like AI machine learning uh, workload on a commodity uh, multi-trust environment. Uh, there's uh, currently we don't uh, divide uh, the uh, AI workloads uh, uh, to multiple clusters. So it's really about uh, find another place to run the whole job. Yeah, and that's all about the material. So uh, I think we have a few time to uh, to do the question and answer. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Very nice. Um, I'm checking here if some uh, uh, questions. Uh, feel free to just speak or raise your hand. Okay, well, people think about it. I have a couple. So <clears throat> the answer is right at uh, at what you said in the end, which is you said uh, uh, workloads, not split workloads between multiple clusters. That's what I understood. But uh, so there is no um, layer activity between uh, different cl clusters. I mean, like pot, pot to pot connectivity or service to service connectivity. Uh, no. So we currently uh, implement the service, uh, basically the service name, but the underlying uh, uh, connectivity, uh, there are already some uh, open source projects and also some are in the CNCF, like the uh, Submariner. And actually, Kamada provide the integration with Submariner to, to, to deal with the uh, end-to-end -end, uh, cross-cluster communication. OK. If you have a, a, a good idea of an end user that uh, things in that setup, uh, that kind of setup, I think it would be really interesting to, to get them to group as well, how they are uh, building on Karmada, Submariner. Yeah. Or other projects to to build a stack that looks like that. Yeah. If you, yeah, if you um, know anyone, the, just... the network da uh, data plan. Um, uh, there are multiple choices. So Submariner is like uh, more like the uh, less requirement to the underlying uh, environment. Uh, uh, but in some of the case, if you end user require very high. Uh, performance of the network, uh, they may need to uh, look for, you know, like the build the VPN or 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 have a or more uh, high high speed uh, commercial uh, solution on that. That's that's why we uh, leave it uh, to uh, multiple uh, choices for users. Yeah. So if we uh, if user are looking for a fully open source, uh, Submariner is a is a good option. Yeah. Checking again. I see other questions. Don't. So my other question was about. Uh, so you you mentioned uh, like the examples you gave of uh, spreading. This. Um, so this kind of shows the usage for like service uh, multiple clusters or service deployment or even hybrid deployment, which is mm -hmm. really nice. Uh, do you know if you uh, submitting uh, sort of batch workloads across multiple clusters? Uh, so. Uh... We we do have uh, actually uh, a set of users that they uh, uh, create batch work workloads on top of Kamada, uh, but the uh, the little bit difference between the service deployments is uh, they don't want split the workload to multiple clusters, so they are just using Kamada to, to 
uh, to automatically find a, a, a proper cluster to run the uh, workload. Yeah, like uh, uh, actually uh, like in Tencent and also uh, like in uh, Bloomberg, they, uh, they already uh, run in that way. Uh, Tencent is already running Kamada actually also uh, together with the Volcano uh, for three years. Yeah, the, the most of the workloads are batch workloads. Okay, so another, another good topic to to, to bring uh, an end user view to complement today to to see what the full stack then looks like with all these projects working together. That would be lovely. Mm -hmm. I can come up with more questions or others. Uh, want to come forward as well i uh, i have a question uh is karmada looking to integrate the recent approved uh cluster policy api that is uh, going to be a native api for multi-cluster kubernetes mm, uh, sorry uh, i had I the question could you uh Repeat it. <clears throat> yes, is Karmada planning to integrate the recent uh, approved cluster inventory API? Uh, you mean the cluster uh, inventory API, right? Yes. Uh, Um, uh, I I not yet uh, took a look at the uh, inventory API, but I think uh, I think yeah. I just pasted the link in the chat. There has been some. I think the the project has been reaching out to other projects like the cluster API and others to understand what uh, the definition of uh, the like. But I, I guess from the reply, it, it means that uh, for now, there's no plan to do it, or did we lose Kevin? No. I think, now oh, oh, wait, let me unable. Okay. You're still there, Kevin? Yep. Might have lost him. I just saw him rejoining, but 